Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I am back with part three of my Tamiya 770S tank transporter build. Uh, as you can see, we've got this truck almost finished. Um, finished enough that this is the last video in the truck series. It turned out just spectacular. Um, I am really pleased with the paint, how everything works, how everything looks. Uh, I just think it's a beautiful truck total beast to drive. Um, lockers, it's, uh, <laughs> it is an amazing truck. So uh, today we'll do the finishing video, get the lights in, get the buyer sound system working. The sound is spectacular. I never get tired of that. So, uh, Hey, let's get started. Well, when I left off on part two, uh, we had the truck kind of up through this point. No lights are hooked up yet. I've just got these temporarily mounted. So now it's time to start figuring out these side plates and getting the lights in those. I've got this side plate here, but because of the extended frame, obviously, we don't fit. So I'm going to have to produce something to fit in here, probably something to fit in here to make it look good, and then we can move on to the equipment rack. So I'm going to play with this a little while and see what I can come up with, um, and I'll probably pop this body off so I can get it out of the way. This is <laughs> kind of interesting trying to figure this out. So I've taken the side plate trimmed the back off so it was straight. I've just got one screw holding it in here just to see how it uh, would work. And then I've got some assorted side plates from various builds I've done in the past. So I took one of those side plates, trimmed off the front, and that will actually fit in here pretty darn well. And I'll probably have to trim off this little back nib. And uh, I've got some mounting brackets that will also from those same builds that will hold it. I'm going to have to make some spacers. And uh, and then to fill in this uh, area here, I've got these um, gift card holders from uh, Tractor Supply. They're actually a, a little box with a diamond plate top. And I'm going to mount that in here. So we're going to wind up with something like this. And that'll fill in this area and make it look nice and um, and kind of tie everything together. So yeah, this is uh, this is I think the the program. So I will continue to work on it and I'll I'll show bits along the way as I as I go. But um, I may have to try and fill in some areas here. This is it doesn't really match the style not not perfectly, but I think when it's painted. Um, camouflaged and the the green that it will look uh, it'll look pretty good and it'll, it'll look kind of military anyway so that's my plan as you can see I've got the side panels mounted um, there was a couple of I had some extra of these L brackets that I just mounted and then it took a a spacer. I just glued a spacer on the back side of this to make it fit right. And I think I've got a pretty good solid look to it. I will mount these in here later. Um, I'll need some kind of a, a block or a mount to attach them to the side frame. And uh, But right now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side to match. Now this has got two lights here and I'm going to have those be amber running lights. And then there's another one right here which I'm going to have them be a flasher, uh, like the other uh, flashers up in front. I don't have a lens for that, so I'll make a lens out of a piece of a milk bottle. So I'll go ahead and do the other side, and then we'll, we'll uh, see what it looks like. I've got both sides mounted up. This side actually opens. Um, what I'm going to do now is there's a, there's a raised bump here that I am going to cut off with the X-Acto knife and sand this smooth. 
so it better matches the panel here. So I will go ahead and cut those down and prep these panels for paint. Um, these two panels just are going to need a, some kind of lamp holder and lens in them. And I'll go ahead and paint these, then I can put the lenses and the lamps in them and mount them back up permanently. I'm very happy with how that looks. When it's painted up and camouflaged, it's going to be really look good and it makes the truck look a lot bigger. So these boxes, um, I'll just figure out a way to mount them in here somehow. Um, drill through the box with a standoff into the side of the frame and put one on each side and paint those green and that's just simply a filler for this area in here. Um, I can't I can't resist using these. They were only three bucks and it's a great way to, to take care of that hole. Um, so that'll, that'll uh, make this chassis look pretty good. So right now I'm in the process of painting these side panels and the, uh, uh, the uh, boxes that mount here. So I thought I'd kind of take a look at the equipment rack. Now the equipment rack's got several parts. The first one is this mount that mounts up to the top of the frame. And then it's got this walkway that has slide-out, drop-down ladders. Now it's back here. And then the equipment rack itself mounts here on top. And then I've got this light bar that originally uh, was thinking about using on the top front of the cab but uh, it's got an aluminum tube with threaded ends and I thought I would mount it up here shining aft. There's a ladder that mounts that just kind of holds in position here like this. And I think I can mount it so it will shine aft and still allow the ladder to uh, to be in, put in and out. And I'm going to got to paint this whole assembly green. Uh, it's all metal. It's going to take a while to paint. So, I'm, And I'll probably have to take these mesh side panels off to paint it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some mounts to mount this light function. I'll paint this deck and I'll paint this rack and get the uh, exact location of the rack and get it painted and mounted. So, yeah, a little bit to do there, but I, I think this, this is going to look just terrific when it's, all, when it's all assembled. So, we'll see how that goes. I will continue to paint these. And then I've decided that when I get the side panels done, I'm going to go ahead and camouflage those uh, before I final install them. And I think that'll be good because they're small enough I can show how I camouflage them in my paint booth where I can't do it when I do the body because the whole truck is just so big I can't film it and get it in the paint booth and everything at the same time. So I'll, I'll do some uh, camouflaging on the side panels and show you how I do that. Complicated truck, but it's so far still going well. As you can see, I've got my, um, my box mounted here. I just painted the box green, made a spacer out of a couple laminated pieces of wood, and ran a couple bolts through it so I can bolt on the other side. I also have my side panels painted. This panel mounts right here. And uh, so I'll get this mounted and then I'll uh, do a little camouflage work on these. Um, the support for the equipment rack is also painted. And it mounts right there. I drilled out the holes and just to match them holes that were already threaded in the rails, so I can go ahead and screw that now. My box is mounted in my uh, my mount for the uh, box. Now it's time to uh, work on these panels, and I'm going to go ahead and do some camouflage painting on them. Uh, what I've been doing is studying pictures of uh, NATO camouflaged vehicles. Uh, the the tendency, they, they, there's three colors, NATO green, NATO brown, NATO black. Uh, the tendency is to have a little more black than brown. 
Uh, these are American Oshkosh tank transporters and Abrams tanks in Germany, but I've been looking at all kinds of uh, pictures of European uh, armor and American and everything with NATO colors. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay out some paint. What I'll do is I will tape these together and then I'll tape these together uh, because the camo will go across the cut line and then I'm going to move my camera over to my paint booth and we'll spray a little camouflage on them. I'll do the brown first and then the uh, NATO black and we'll see how those turn out and I'll get them mounted. I'm going to camouflage the rear fenders and obviously the body and the uh, the box, but I will do the box separately from the body. Then I'll put the body on the truck and do the camouflage all at once on that and do the fenders at the same time. I won't be able to to show that on video because it's just literally going to be hard to fit this thing in my, my paint booth, but these I can show pretty well. So let's go ahead and paint these, then I'll mount the, the lights in them and get them installed. So I wanted to give a little detail um, of my my spray booth. This is a couple of uh, spray booths that you can buy on Amazon and I've just put two of them together so I have room for trucks. Sorry it's a little bit noisy but we got two fans going. So I've got my airbrush here and I'm going to go ahead and shoot the brown. You can see I've got the two side panels. I taped them together so they're in the proper uh, orientation. And then I've got the two side panels for the uh, equipment rack. So you can see, well, maybe. So this will all be uh, done freestyle. I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off and then I'm going to finish the, the brown on this and then I'll come back. I'll actually move the camera in closer and we'll do some black. Alright, so now it's time for the black. You can see the, the brown is dry here. So let's just give this a shot.
double check everything. like when they dry. Back to my workbench and uh, you can see the, the camo turned out really nice. It's going to look great. This truck's going to look fantastic. I uh, sprayed a coat of clear flat over these just to kind of seal the colors and blend everything in. I will probably do a little bit of weathering later. So now I'm going to go ahead and install the lights in these side panels and then we'll get those put on. I also did these um, side panels for the equipment rack, which I still have to paint. I wiped it down with uh, alcohol to clean it, but that's going to be a painting project. And I did paint the walkway, which mounts up here. So as I start to put all this together, it's starting to look pretty good. Um, We'll, uh, we'll get those lights in. The side panels for the 770S are designed for um, LEDs, so they have a lens that drops in, a, a holder that drops in, you don't even have to glue the lens in, and then this little clip holds the LEDs. Yeah, I set that on the floor. I even do that stuff, usually with C-clips. Uh, I had to open up the opening with a knife just to fit the type of LED that I use. And then that screws in. So that um, is all there is to it for the LEDs in the side. And then I will figure out exactly how to route the wiring and uh, get this panel mounted. On the back panel is this one. This is the panel I made from pieces I had. Uh, it has. It's going to have an LED. And it has a couple of brackets to hold it, but I don't have a lens for it, so I'm going to make a lens. And uh, actually, that'll be a good opportunity to show how I make lenses when I don't have one. So on the lens for that, um, what I use are pieces of milk cartons. And I, uh, when I'm ready to throw a milk carton away, I, I save it and I cut it up because this, this milky plastic is wonderful stuff. But some places on the milk carton, it's got this pebble grain and that makes great light lenses so I cut a couple of pieces out of the um, pebble area. They're just stuck onto a piece of double sticky tape here so they wouldn't slip around while I paint them. And then I put a couple coats of this Tamiya X26 clear orange paint. Matter of fact, I can use one more coat. And uh, that turns them amber. Amazingly cool. And I had already test fitted them when I cut them out. 
simple to cut out with an X-Acto knife. So there we go. I'll let those dry and I can glue them in. And then I will have to make a little bracket of some kind to hold my LED, but that's no big deal. I'll just cut a piece of plastic and drill an eighth inch hole in it and glue the LED in and screw it on there. And uh, then that lint, that cover will be ready to put on. There's my panel mounted with the uh, lights in it. A um, couple little details I did bolt on this exhaust uh, outlet that I had painted with NATO black. I've got this step here that mounts in here. I'm going to go ahead and mount that. And then there's another step that mounts up here, which I have not painted yet, so I will paint that with NATO black next time I get the airbrush going and uh, get that mounted. So um, I pulled my wires up into the cab and now I will go ahead and mount the other side and then my lenses are dry so I'll go ahead and do the lights in this and get those mounted. And there's the, uh, the side panels done. I cut a little square piece of plastic, drilled a couple holes, there was some screw bosses there, drilled an eighth inch hole for the LED, glued it in. Uh, I'm going to use some hot glue to glue the wires to the bottom of the channel and then I'm going to go ahead and paint these uh, with a couple coats of uh, NATO green, that one, NATO green, uh, so everything blends in and uh, extend the wires and go ahead and mount these panels. I decided before I uh, hook up the wiring I'm going to go ahead and paint the back end, the back fenders, um, and I'm going to do a little painting on those boxes just to blend everything in. So what I've done here is I've put a uh, Ziploc sandwich bag over the tires so I don't get any paint on them and just done a, a small amount of masking. With an airbrush there's really not a lot of overspray so um, I can get the paint where I want so I don't need to uh, do that. And then what I'll do is I'll use uh, a piece of uh, file card for example, in here, when I do the brown, I'm going to paint the fender brown to match that area. I'll just stick a file card in there and then airbrush that, pull it out. When I do the black, I'll do that. When I paint this, I can put the file card up there and paint it. Same thing here. And uh, that way I don't paint what I, I don't want to and I don't have to do a lot of really fancy masking. So I'm going to go ahead and get this painted. And there's the results of the uh, airbrushing in the back end. Um, fenders, the boxes. Um, I also installed this walkway with the slide out ladders. So now um, I have to paint this box which I will thing right here which I will be doing and that's going to probably take a, a while to get paint everywhere. So I'll get that painted and then I'm going to start um, hooking up the wiring. Basically once I get all the wiring hooked up in the SFR program we should be about done. I just wanted to show the equipment rack after um, putting some camouflage on it actually painted up pretty well. I wiped it down with alcohol first, but uh, yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. So now I'm going to move on to some electronics. So now it's time to uh, get my electronics uh, going, and I've got my SFR1 here. I'm not going to go over every little detail of it because I've done it in other videos, um, but I do have the, uh, the sound for a V8 turbocharged diesel. So I've got that loaded in there. I've got some horn sounds, uh, kind of normal stuff. But the thing I want to talk about is the flashing lights. Now I've got my little test strip here, and you can see that I've got like, uh, those are interior lights, those are dash lights. Um, I've got my, my uh, roof lights, my forward facing roof lights. So I've used the test strip to kind of get everything organized. 
But the one thing I said that I wanted to do was have my my uh, flashing lights go flash flash with a pause, flash flash with a pause, because I watched a bunch of NATO trucks on video and that's how they do it. So you can see when I hold this over, I get a flash flash and a pause. And I want to show how to do that because that's something that I haven't shown how to do with the, with the SFR. So I'm going to zoom in on the computer screen, we'll show you how to do it, then I'll unplug my test strip and plug my body in and we'll see how it looks. So here's my SFR sound teacher. You can see I've got my engine sounds and stuff in there. So we're going to whip up here to the configuration tab. And you can see there's uh, function sequences down here. You go over to the function sequence tab and then you've got up to eight different function sequences. And when you start, it gives you a box like this, which basically says, and there's on and off switches and durations. And it basically says, okay, I want this light to turn off or on for this amount of time. And everything is set to one millisecond to start with and everything's set to off. So what you do is you pick out the function that you want, the output that you want, now I made notes on my cab and the flashers were output 3. So I would go just click on output 3 here and click OK. And then I would turn the light on for whatever amount of time, half a second. OK, then I'll go output 3 again because we want the same light. And click OK. And then we want it to go off for, you know, whatever amount of time, half a second. The cool thing about this is you can just, you can just uh, try it, especially with one of these little uh, LED test strips. You can just try it, download it, try and download it until you get it the way you want. Now over here on the right it says total steps, loop, start, loop, end, and then once or loop. So what you can do is if you only want to have we had an on off on off and off so I'm going to go back to sequence one which is the one I already set up so it's on off on off so it goes on for seven milliseconds off for 20 on for seven and off for one and a half now over here on the right I just click total steps four and all that does is just reduces the box to the four steps we're using. And then down here, instead of once, I click loop. So it just goes through over and over and over again and does the same sequence. On, off, on, off for longer. And gives me my flashing sequence that I wanted. And I played with those times until I, until I got it just how I wanted it. And then so up here in the outputs, then output three, see we don't even have anything in there. You don't need to. And on the prop channels, we're using prop channel four. And then we just click a down arrow and then go over here and the function sequences are over here in this area. So we just clicked fun function sequence one and transferred it. And so that means that when we move the stick over for three seconds, uh, the flashing light starts and then we move it over for three seconds and the flashing light stops. So that's how you do a, a custom flash sequence or light sequence. So now I'm going to go back, expand this out, we'll plug in the body and see how it looks like on the body lights. So I've got my body here, I've got my controller. So if I turn this for three seconds, I'll get my roof lights. Pull it down for three seconds. I'll get this set of roof lights. And repeat the process to turn them off. Now, move this over once, I get my interior lights. You can see those, and they look quite nice. Uh, and same thing, I'll turn them off. This is the dash lights. Trust me, they look good, but I'll show them off later. Now, hold this over three seconds, we should get our flashers. 
Now you can see I got the output sequence I want, which is two flashes and a pause. And it just looks a little better than flash, flash, flash all the time. Plus it, it mimics uh, what the, the actual uh, NATO trucks do. So that takes care of my, uh, my body lights. I just have that plugged in, pretty simple. There's one plug to plug in the body. So now all I have to do is program the turn signals and those lights. I've showed that before, so I'm going to skip over that, but I'll use my same little LED test strip, get those all set. Then I have to wire all the wiring from the, uh, from the chassis up, and then I plug those two in, and basically it's going to be ready to go. So uh, that that's ability to, to sequence flashers is really cool. And I can just think of all kinds of possibilities, chasing lights and, and whatever. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So you could have, for example, you could have output one through eight, and you could turn on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and go back and forth. So if you wanted to do like the sweeping LEDs that uh, the Night Rider car used, you know, you could do those, that kind of thing. So all kinds of possibilities with that. Pretty cool stuff. All right, back to work on the truck. Well, as you can see, I've got some lights on. So uh, what I've done is I hooked all my wiring from the truck into the, the two plugs. So this plug goes to the chassis and this plug goes to the um, upper body. So I can just pull that plug, take the whole body off. There's actually one more plug here. And then, uh, and then the speaker plug body comes off. So I've got my upper lights, upper lights. You can see I've got my um, my flashers that I wanted to do and they also flash here and back here if you can see them. Uh, headlights, fog lights, lower grill lights, interior lights, dash lights. Um, of course all the tail lights are working and we'll, we'll show those later. So I've got everything set up the way I wanted as far as lights go. So now I'm going to pull all this stuff and get this mounted and hook up the servos and the and the uh, throttle wires and test those and so I've got uh, I've got three servos like I mentioned I've got my shift which is going to be right here three positions I've got my lockers which is going to be right here two positions and then of course my steering so those three servos will plug directly into the receiver neat thing about S bus is you only need one wire to go to the buyer system but also all the normal output still works, so I can plug, you know, I have eight channels um, I can plug servos into if I need to. So what I like to do is start using all the um, the channels that are like nine and ten that aren't on here um, first, so I leave these lower channels open. So channel five will be my shift and channel six will be my lockers. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get that mounted, and then I can continue to keep this plugged in, and I can download the remaining sounds that I want to put on it. I've got some horns, but I want to do a little bit of work with those. I'm going to see if I can find a siren somewhere. So I've got all my wiring hooked up. Uh, all the chassis wiring runs to the plug. All the body wiring runs to the plug. I hooked up the servos to the receiver, plugged in the motor. So we'll plug this thing in and see what we got. So we should have steering, and we do. And my turn signals are backwards. That's fine, we'll just fix that in the sound teacher. Throttle is also backwards. So we can switch that in the radio or the sound teacher, I'll do that later. Uh, my transmission High speed, medium, low. Okay, that's correct. My diff lockers, okay, right now they're unlocked. And now they're locked. Okay, that works real good. Um, and I've already checked all my lights, so I've got to reverse my, my uh, turn signals and my throttle. I'll go ahead and get that done. I can reverse the throttle in here, but Let's see here, do we have sound? Okay, 
the reason I check that is my sounds are correct. So my backing beeper operates when that's in reverse. So I will um, reverse the throttle with the uh, sound teacher. Okay, well I'm going to do a little bit of uh, playing with that and get it done. Just a quick note on the direction. I realized the sounds were correct and the truck was running backwards. So I just had to reverse the two wires to the motor which I'm telling people all the time to do, and I just had sort of forgot. But anyway, flip those, now it runs the right direction, sounds are right, and everything is good. I just have to reverse the, uh, the turn signals in the sound teacher. Just a couple other quick things I want to show here on this is uh, the turn signals. I want to get those correct. So I go to outputs and down here you can see right and left, so I just need to reverse those. So we'll go left and then right. Okay, and then one other thing I want to do, since I'm going to use a Bluetooth trailer module, I need to go to the general tab and I need to select the Bluetooth trailer module. I want to get that little module, it looks like this, plugged in so when I button up the truck everything will be all ready. So we'll transfer that and that should sort out my turn signals. I'm going to do other few other checks and then I'll be uh, mounting the unit. What I've done here is I've stuck the uh, receiver down with a piece of double sticky tape, made a spacer for the back of the SFR1 and stuck it on with double sticky tape here and here and then I just cut some carbon fiber decal just to clean up the back of that. So you can see my wiring here. I've got to tie up. I clipped off the battery plug so I can pull the wires down through here and pull them around and then I'll tie all this up. One thing I want to do is the programming cable for the buyer plugs in right here once I get the body on, I won't be able to access that, so I'm going to plug a servo extension in and drop it down here, so that way I can just plug it in if I want to make programming changes without having to remove the body. So I'll get that tied up, and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. This is finalized. Um, I've got all the wiring tied up. The Bluetooth uh, transmitter for the trailer is hooked up. This little cable right here is now my programming data plug-in. And these two wires will be the power. Remember the um, battery is going to go in this compartment right here. So they'll run up into this slot. Uh, and I'll solder a connector back on there. So now I can put the body on. All I have to do is plug in these these two wires here and then this plug plugs in here and the wiring will all sit behind this bulkhead and everything should look fine so I'll go ahead and get the body set on and then I'll gosh uh, I guess finish painting the camouflage on the body will be the next thing well I've got the uh, cab on all the wiring is hooked up so now I've got to uh, paint the camouflage on the cab it's of course painted on the back end, looks pretty good. My wire here is going to go into my equipment rack. And uh, yeah, so now I've got to get it over to the paint booth and do some airbrushing, which I am not going to show because physically having to move this around and film it is just not going to work. But use the same technique I did on the back. We'll go ahead, I'm going to mask these off and uh, do some airbrushing. We'll see what it looks like in a few minutes here. Actually, for you, it's only going to be a few seconds. Well, there's the uh, truck with the airbrush uh, camouflage on the cab and other places. I've got details to do. There's a, a bracket that mounts here, windshield wipers, step treads, which I've painted. Um, I just haven't put them on yet. Uh, but I think the paint turned out really nice. I, I like the looks of this. I love the colors. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add those little details. The next thing I have to do is take my equipment rack 
and I'm going to mount this light bar up on the top. I did make some little brackets and painted them, so I'll go ahead and get those mounted on. This wiring will run down and then run up into the back of the cab, and I'll have to uh, um, splice one more wire in, so I will have to pop the cab off to do that. And so I'll go ahead and mount those and mount the little details. We'll see what that looks like. I added uh, um, some of those bits, I added the steps, I painted the lug nuts, I added the wipers, I put the lenses in the lights, um, just kind of some of the little final details. And I had not programmed the um, on-off for this light bar, so I'm really glad I ran that little jumper out here because now I can plug in my cable and I can transfer my data to update that. I did a couple other little minor updates. So this is cool because in the future all I need to do is just plug this in and then I can change any effect or add sounds or, or whatever. And I, By the time I'm done with the entire project I will add a lot more to it because once I get the trailer and the tank on there I plan on adding some additional sounds. Well there we go. Um, I have got it as done as it's going to be up to this point. Um, I will start working on the uh, low boy trailer and I will continue to be doing a few things on the truck which I will show. For example, I don't have a driver figure in there yet. I'm going to do some weathering. I've got a few other antennas and things to add. Um, so I'll be doing those along with the rest of the project. But you can see here that the basic truck is done. It looks, I think, just spectacular. I have not done a Tamiya truck in camo before and I am just super pleased with how this turned out. Um, I really like everything about it. Um, so I will, uh, I'm going to actually clean up my bench a little and I'll come back and just show some of the uh, some of the lighting and sound features because the sound is spectacular. Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to start by showing some of the rear lights. So you can see here that I've got the rear bumper lights and those are on when it's stopped. And when you go forward, the lights go off, because those are brake lights. When you go backwards, the lights go off, and the uh, reverse lights come on. If you want to have, um, basically, tail lights, you hold the right stick up for three seconds. You'll see these go brighter. Now when I go forward, they're still on, just dimmer. Uh, emergency flashers are right here and then of course turn signals uh, right turn and left turn and we can turn the tail lights off so that's the rear lights and then this upper light bar three seconds down gives me this light bar which is very nice and I think it's going to illuminate the trailer really well I actually lowered the lighting in here a little bit just so you can see that so that um, constitutes the rear lighting. Okay, the front lighting uh, is controlled by the sticks on the left, so this little upper one, one second up turns on the headlights, and yes, the headlight on that side is not working. Uh, taking the body on and off, I probably broke a wire. I'll fix that later. And down is fog lights. Uh, hold it up for three seconds, turns on our upper light bar, down for three seconds, turns on our forward-facing running lights. The uh, uh, lower spotlights are controlled by this stick, so we go left for three seconds, and it turns on the lower spots, and if we go uh, right for three seconds, it turns on my very cool flashers, which um, I did 
I get, did what I said I was going to do. I got flash, flash, and a pause. Very happy with that. And it also shows on the side here. There's also some side marker lights. And uh, let's see, the side marker lights are on the right stick up one second. So they're here and they stay on. Left on the stick turns on the dash lights. Right on the stick turns on the interior lights. There's four of them. I know it's really hard to see on the camera, but it really lights it up nicely. It'll look good with a driver figure in there. So, this knob gives me horns. Okay. Got two different horn sounds, and I'm going to add other sounds later to that. And I, remember, I have a volume control here. Engine start. There you go. I uh, I am super pleased with this truck. I think it just turned out really well, exactly like I wanted it to turn out. Um, the camo is is pretty cool. Um, it's going to look spectacular with the trailer and the tank. So um, those are coming up. Uh, the next part I will do the low boy trailer, and the low boy trailer is going to be camouflaged like the truck. And it will have the um, buyer uh, Bluetooth trailer light module wireless to the truck. I'll continue to do a few things on the truck along the way. And then the next part after that will be the tank. So stay, stay tuned for the next part. It's probably going to be a week and a half, maybe even two weeks before I get that done. I've got a lot of other things going on. But uh, we will get to it pretty fast. Uh, as always, um, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate those that help me with the YouTube rankings. Uh, appreciate your comments. Um, obviously, you can visit visit uh, hobbyconcepts.net if you're interested in some of this stuff, and uh, especially like the buyer products or the uh, or the modified Fly Sky radios. This this FS ST8 is a spectacular radio for these. So uh, anyway, there you go. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.